So I was asked about a case yesterday where the customer was trying to set up a data source in the Power BI Admin Center, and they got an error when they did test connection where it mentioned that there was an SSL error. And when we get an SSL error, we're talking about certificates and encryption when connecting to the data source. Uh, and you can see here that we did have encrypt connection checked, and if we uncheck that, uh, it would actually work perfectly fine. But when we do check it, it will go through and then eventually we'll, uh, we'll get the SSL error. So I have a coworker that doesn't really like connectivity cases, but loves Power BI cases. And what's odd is that they will like connectivity if it's wrapped in Power BI. And this is a great example of something that's not really Power BI. Um, it's really just a connectivity error. Um, this could happen, I, we're, we're seeing it from a facet of Power BI, uh, but it actually has nothing to do with Power BI. This is just a client trying to connect a SQL server and getting an error. Um, so to kind of show that or illustrate that, let me hit cancel here. And let's just do Management Studio. We'll go to Connect and we'll say uh, Database Engine, do Options, and we'll say Encrypt Connection, and we'll go Connect, and we'll get an error as well. So and we'll see the SSL provider error. So this is not specific to Power BI, uh, but it came up as Power BI, so that's why I want to show it. Uh, one other thing I'll show here uh, is the difference between the providers that we actually pick here. One thing you'll see here is that we have Microsoft OLEDB provider for SQL Server. Now that may be necessary depending on what the connection is within your Excel workbook. I've had other blogs where I talk about that the provider has to match the data source and the connection string within the Excel workbook. So it may be necessary, but in general this is the old driver that ships with Windows that's it's really old. Um, it hasn't been updated in a long time, um, so I, if you can move off of that, I definitely recommend it. One of the things, one of the reasons why I recommend moving off of that is because the error that we got with the OLEDB provider just said that there was an SSL error. It, it's not overly helpful here. So if I change to like SQL Native Client 11, and we go to do this again, we'll see that we get an error much faster and also it'll give us more details in the error message so if we scroll down here it'll actually tell us a certificate chain uh, was issued by an authority that's not trusted that's a very specific error um, and so what this means is that we don't trust the certificate that was presented by SQL Server we don't we can't follow the certificate chain and from that perspective we can't trust the certificate and if we don't trust the certificate we're not going to we're not going to allow this to go through because it's it could be a potential attack so uh, so let's take a look at what that means and how do we correct that so let me go back to so one thing we can do here is we go to I want to kind of talk about certificates a little bit here And I always go to MMC, we can go to Add, Remove, snap in Certificates. So when we go to add this, there's a couple things to be aware of. Uh, typically when I see this error, it means that we need to add a the certificate to the trusted root store on the machine that's trying to connect uh, because it doesn't trust it. And so to add it to the trusted root, uh, trusted, uh, root on this machine would mean that we would then trusted because it was added into our trusted uh, root zone. So when we do this though we need to be careful about how we add that. Um, you'll see when I add this snap in I've got three options here my user account, service account, or computer account. My user accounts selected by default um, and this is actually not what we want to use. So we actually want to use the computer account. The reason for that is because for my user if I were to do this through Management Studio and add it to the trusted root in the my user store um, this would allow management studio to work and give you the false sense that hey I fixed the issue so the problem is is from the data management gateway perspective that doesn't run under my user account and it runs under local system which is the computer context um, and so if we add it into the computer account that actually will cover uh, everything at that point 
Um, and so it, it covers anything from a machine perspective, so regardless of what user it is. So I always say do it from the computer account context, not from your user or from a specific service account, unless you're trying to really restrict usage of it and you know what you're doing there. Um, otherwise, you can get into a lot of trouble. So let's go ahead and choose computer account. We'll hit next and then finish. Okay. And there's a couple things here that we'll see. The first is the personal store. And so this is where the certificates are there for you to use. Um, and then the other one is the trusted root uh, certification authorities. And so what we're interested in here is the trusted root certification authorities store. Um, and if we go look at certificates, these are all the things that look any certificate chain that is out there, these are the routes that we trust. Um, and so VeriSign is a good example of this. VeriSign, if it's if it's created by VeriSign, we will trust VeriSign. Um, you'll see that VeriSign's down here. You'll see that GoDaddy's uh, up there, or not GoDaddy. Uh, so GeoTrust, GlobalSign. Uh, I've got a you know there's a Microsoft Root Authority. Um, these are all certificate authorities that are kind of globally trusted. Um, and so any certificate made from these certificate authorities will just work because we trust the the chain path that it came from. Uh, one thing we don't have is the certificate that is actually coming from SQL Server. And so what I did, let me grab, I actually created a self-signed certificate. There's kind of a, there's a couple options you can do there. So one is you can create a self-signed certificate. There is no uh, real certificate authority. It's just a generic certificate, um, which is also why it's not in covered by the trusted root. Um, the other thing you could do is actually get a certificate from a you know, an actual valid certificate authority like VeriSign, um, that would work. Uh, the other way you can do it is if you actually have from your domain perspective, you can actually set up a certificate authority within your domain, which I do have. So let's go and grab the certificate. So and I think I put it on my desktop. I did. And so what I did is I created a self-signed certificate, um, and then I exported that to the P PFX file. And so one thing you can do is use makecert to create a self-signed certificate. Um, this is the command I used for makecert that uh, generated this certificate. Uh, makecert's available in the Windows SDK, um, so you can get it from that. So this is uh, the, the things that I'll call out here is that you need to have the EK, EKU tag um, that actually says that this is a server certificate that's required uh, the other thing is the SKY uh, tag here is exchange that's also required uh, the other thing I'm doing is the secure store is marked as my which means it's going to add it to the personal uh, store and the SR is local machine means it's going to add it to the computer account and it, this was done on the SQL server and then I exported it added it to my trusted root store on the SQL server um, and then I exported uh, at that point I've got the PFX that I can bring over to this machine. So let's go ahead and add that certificate. We can do that by right clicking on the certificates here, all tasks and import. We're going to go to local machine, let me go get the PFX. So the, there's a couple things that are, so a PFX is actually has the private key inside of it. Um, a CER file or certificate file only has the public key in it. Um, from our perspective, for what we're trying to get around here, just to get it in the trusted root store, we don't need the actual pub or the private key. All we need is the public key. So a CER file would be fine here. We don't need the full PFX. Um, but I've got it there anyway, as this is a test machine, so it's not a big deal. I'm going to add it to trusted root, finish import was successful so if we go back here now we can see uh, gynacube sql .gynacube com and the the key icon uh, on the uh, or the little key symbol on the icon means that it has the private key um, the other ones you'll see don't have a private key it's just a it's just the public key piece of that from a trusted root perspective all you need is the public key so now that that's there we can go back to our test here. Let's go back to the OLED provi DB provider because that was what the original issue came in as. We'll do set credentials. Do encrypt connection. 
organization, test connection, and now the test connection was successful because we added that to the trusted store. Um, I've seen some mentions about you need to add it to the personal store as well. That's just not true. Uh, what we care about is the certificate path. Um, and so the, what I mean by that is when you go to a certificate, if you look at the certification path, there should not be a red X anywhere in here. Um, if there is, then that's a problem. Uh, let me show you what I mean by that. We'll go to my SQL server. I've got some that the management gateway does, and you'll see a red X on the certificate icon here. That means that I don't trust something about the certificates invalid. Um, that doesn't, a lot of people think that's the date. It doesn't necessarily mean the date. Um, it could be the date. It could be uh, that there's uh, some aspect of, this, of the certificate that's not valid. Um, in this case, it's the certification path that has the red X on it because we don't trust, we don't know what that root is. Um, the only way that this would be valid is if it was located in my trusted root authority or trusted root store. So, uh, assuming all of that is right, then uh, we will the the piece will go through uh, fine, and we can connect without issue. And if I go back to SQL Native Client, this one will connect as well. See. And it didn't like that. So and it doesn't. So here it's talking about the target principal name is incorrect, and that's because I'm specifying the NetBIOS name versus the FQDN, because uh, the certificate is is labeled as the FQDN. So if I change this to to the FQDN, this should match the certificate, and then that will work. So Snack is a little more stringent than the old OLEDB provider. And now we're tested successfully because it matched against the certificate. So uh, the last thing I'll show you is because uh, I talked about you can actually have a uh, trusted, uh, you could actually have a certificate authority from a domain perspective. One way you can create the certificate for that, there's multiple ways you can do it. Um, in this, I can go to IIS, I have it on my SharePoint box, and I can actually create a domain certificate versus a self-signed certificate. And if I do that, I can actually give it a name. Next, and this is where we specify the certificate authority. I have it on my domain controller, and this is the certificate authority name. We'll click OK. Friendly name will be com. We'll do finish. Uh, and then we have that certificate listed there. Uh, if we look at this and we go to the certificate path, you can actually see that the certificate authority is my uh, domain controller certificate. And so anything issued by that will be trusted within my domain. And I can verify that by going back to my app server. Um, and if we look at the, ser the trusted root, uh, we can actually see that that's listed there. And we can see the domain controller there uh, is my root certificate. So it would automatically be trusted. I wouldn't have to, do, I wouldn't have to export any certificate. I can just use it. Um, and we'd be good to go. So, all right, hopefully this uh, helps you just kind of understand SSL and uh, getting that to work if your data source ends up having uh, encryption enabled and forced and you want to use that and you get those kind of errors, just make sure that the certificates are right um, and that they're in the right spot. All right, thanks for watching.